Before we um, start adding random effects to the model, let's take a step back and consider analysis of a single person. So we consider n equals 1 d sum analysis, which is in line with classic time series analysis. For instance, you look at one unit, such as the city of Los Angeles and its air pollution over a long time series, looking for patterns in that time series. So we are looking at a graph like this in the univariate case. And here we're looking at a regression between observed variables. There's no longer a decomposition into within and between because we're only looking at one person. And therefore, this is just a standard linear regression as it's drawn. We have an intercept, we have a slope, and we have a residual variance. So three parameters. So assuming that we have enough time points to estimate three parameters, this should, should be just fine. The estimate should be coming out OK. Of course, we can look at multivariate versions too, adding variables to the model. And a common example is the VAR model, vector autoregressive model, which is like cross-leg panel modeling, except now for very long time series. And the interesting thing is that M plus allows a full structural equation model to be specified, even when you're analyzing only a single person. So for instance, you can do factor analysis for one person, as long as you have enough time points. So what, is the, what does the M plus input look like then? Well, we're considering one variable, and we add use observations ID equals 41. So we're taking a look at person 41 in our sample. We still have the lagged option and we still have the t-interval option. But uh, we don't do um, type equals two level analysis. This is regular single level analysis. Estimator is still base, however. And the model then is a single model specification, single level model specification. PA regressed on PA at a previous time point, lag one. Very simple to do. And on slide 57, and we'll take a look at the data for this person 41. Time series plot for seven days, again, the seven days of Tuesday through Monday. And we have the PA score on the y axis, and we see that uh, the person has pretty uh, level mood, positive affect mood for Monday, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but then get very happy on both Saturday and Sunday, and less so on Monday. On the x-axis then, we, this person is observed through 79 time points, and there are 12 occasions per day with t interval 2, so 12 per day for 7 days, max 84. So it, this person didn't record all the way up to that time point. However, even though there are 79, 79 time points, only 46 of them are not missing. The rest is missing. So the effective sample size for this analysis is 46. But that's still OK since we are analyzing or estimating only three parameters. Sample size 46 for three parameters should be just fine. On slide 58, then, we take a look at the estimates for the three, these three parameters. So we see this autoregressive estimate, 0 0.636. So that's a little higher than for the uh, overall estimate for everyone. It is significant. Even though it's only for one person, we can find significance of it. And um, we get the intercept and the residual variance. Now, once again, we can ask ourselves, well, what's the mean of this person's variable, a person's model, or variables in the model? Well, we asked in the regular output, we give only these three values. So you have to draw on your knowledge about stationarity 
And the n equals 1 model has this equation. There's no subscript i needed because we're looking at only at one person. So the sample points are the different time points. So we have an intercept, which we call nu, nu in Greek, plus a, the slope, and then a residual. Stationarity implies that the mean at time t is the same as the me mean at time t minus 1. We can call that mu. And therefore, we have the equation that the mean of that is equal to the intercept plus beta times the mean of that, which is the same. And therefore, we can move that over to the left and divide through by 1 minus beta, and out comes uh, the mean, expressed in terms of parameters that are printed in the output. So in this case, it turns out to be uh, 5.97. And that's seen, actually, in Tech 4 and the residual output. And I should uh, mention that um, the variance that we talked about before Although it's not printed in the regular output, you can find it in Tech 4 and the residual. So you don't have to uh, add the model constraint that I talked about, but you get the standard errors if you do that. So this person is on average um, 5.97. And we recall then that the mean for everybody was 5.76. So this person is slightly uh, higher on the positive affect scale. Now the interesting thing is that, um, as is seen here on slide 59, uh, you can do a joint analysis, n equals 1 analysis, of all individuals and summarize that conveniently in M+. Plus. So that can be done by using the data uh, option, data command option, type equals Monte Carlo. And we describe uh, that kind of feature in the user's guide example 12.6, part 1 and part 2, how you set that up. So you analyze all the individuals in one run, and you get the estimates averaged uh, by this feature. And you can see, we'll check the M plus input uh, at this website. And that's a website that goes with a new book that I recommend, and it, at least the chapter here I recommend strongly, for DSIM. So it's the Hamaker, Asparov, Mutian Dynamic Structural Equation Modeling as a Combination of Time Series Modeling, Multi-Level Modeling, and Structural Equation Modeling. Chapter 31 in the new uh, second edition handbook of uh, SCM. And in this section of that chapter called Empirical Illustration Part 1 on page 580 of the book, you will find a discussion of this joint n equals 1 analysis of all individuals. And uh, it also then describes this type equals Monte Carlo data command feature. You can find this chapter um, uh, in the pre-publication version on at this URL. So I recommend that chapter warmly and uh, I also recommend exploring n equals 1 analysis, uh, joint analysis of all individuals as a precursor to seeing which effects, which parameters should be random, should vary across individuals. You can see the variation across individuals in this fashion.